Airtable has recently released Portal's feature that can set you back by up to $3,000 per month. But in this video, we'll show you how you can turn existing Airtable interface into a client portal for free. Stick around. Hi, this is Greg from Business Automated, and on this channel we help you save time and money by automating your business workflows. If you are new here, consider subscribing to get the latest updates, or even joining our channel to get a wide range of membership-only perks. Now let's get to the juicy part. I'll show you how to convert an existing Airtable interface into a client portal for free. Free, assuming that you are at least on the team plan, and your usage will not exceed 1,000 free responses in fillout. And let me explain now why this matters and what is the workaround that we are using. So every interface that you build, you are able to share that interface with other users. And once you're sharing this, you're able to select what kind of role you would invite them to. If you invite people as an editor or a commenter, they will become a billable users on your account. However, when you invite users as a read-only user, then those users, according to Airtable pricing policy, the read-only collaborators are not classified as billable, means all those read-only users are considered free. So you would not pay for inviting those users to your interface. Note why this will not work on the free plan is that if you are on the free plan, you would not be able to share the interface only, you would share the whole underlying base. So that breaks the plan a little bit because you would share all the information inside. So using this free read-only access, we are able to share this interface with other people, but the interface that we will share with our clients will be read-only. So if we would like to get any input or response back from our clients, this is where we will use the fill-out forms so that we can get some responses back from our clients. Now let's take a look at our Airtable setup. So here we have three tables, uh, table customers, when we have the name of the customer, the name of the contact person and their email address. This will be important part later. And we have also here the task table, which contains the tasks that the customers have requested from us. And finally here we have the invoice table, which contains the invoices that we are sending to our customers. Now, this is all being visible inside of interface and you can see that we have two types of interfaces. So we have interface that we will be sharing here with the clients and here we have the interface that is our internal interface that we are using for our team. So you can see that, for example, here we can see like all the customers that we are having. Here we have also all the tasks for all the clients and um, dashboard with with summary of all the tasks and so on, um, as well as details of a customer profile. And you will see that the customer portal is really much the copy of the pages from the internal portal with one difference. All of them on the top level are filtered out by email. So here, once we go to filter by, here we have contact email is the same as the email of the person that is logged in. So for example, here, I am previewing this as Greg at Business Automated and the company 002 is the one that has Greg at Business Automated as the contact person. So this is the reason why I can see only this company. If I would change this to the second email over here, which is Paul, you will see that Paul is the contact person at company 002. That is why if I would be logged in as this user, I would only see the same the record over here. This would also apply to the invoices because we have done the lookup field on the on the tasks and on the invoices. And the same thing is visible over here. So this way on all of the fields over here, we have filtered out by the contact person that is related to the company. And this way we are not allowing those people to see details that do not relate to their companies. So once we have set up this part over here, the next step is we would basically share this as a read on the access, let's say with, with Paul, we'll send him an invite over here. And this is what Paul at Business Automated would be able to see. So there will be no visibility for the internal interface. 
the only visibility would be for the pages that belong to that email and that company that have been shared over here. So all the tasks and from all the list of the companies, we can see only one company over here. And now once we click over here, you see that within the details of the company, we have two interactive buttons where we are using fill out. So the first button is update. So we can use this update button to, for example, ask to, to change the name of the company, if the clients would like to update them the name of the company, or if they would like to update their bank account, or if they would like to add some additional asset, a different logo, different brand guidelines and so on. So the moment they have um, executed that, that update over here and the submission, you see that this will get updated here inside of the interface. You can see that now this has refreshed and now we have updated the name here. The same thing would apply, for example, if we would like to give an option to our customer to create new task, for example, create new website. And also the way the fill out is set up is that it will automatically link to that specific customer. So it will show up under that specific customer over here. So that's it. And if you would like to learn a bit more how to set up fillout forms so that they connect to existing linked records or how to use fillout to update existing records, then uh, do subscribe. We'll have those videos coming out shortly. All right, guys, thank you very much for your time and let me know how you like this video and good luck automating your business.